everybody welcome to my youtube channel it's allison and i'm back with another video today we're going to be doing something a little different i am actually going to watercolor so i'm going to be using a couple stamp sets from house mouse this is from the winter collection the most recent one and they are just so adorable now I have gotten a few new watercoloring supplies from Spellbinders recently, including this new watercolor card stock. So I wanted to test it out and see how it performed. Now I'm not a watercolor expert, but I do have certain um, watercolor papers that are in my stash, so I thought I'd compare them. Now I'm gonna pull this up and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the texture on the Spellbinders cardstock is very kind of linen texture, I'm gonna describe it as. So first I'm gonna compare it to the Canson watercolor paper that I, I use this a lot for my shimmer powders. And you'll see the Canson is a little bit more white, even though I wouldn't call the Canson white. And it's also not as heavy as the Spellbinders. Now here I have Arches Cold Press, and I would definitely compare the weights of these to be similar. And they're also both, I would say, off-white, um, just not in the same way. I also have this new water brush set from Spellbinders. Now there are three different sizes, which are great. You can see the different tip sizes that they have, fine, medium, and bold. And these are the kind of brushes that the top screws off and you can put water in them so that you don't have to keep dipping your brush into water. But I will tell you that over the years I've learned when I'm gonna watercolor, and first I'm gonna introduce the stamps. The one on the left is the Candy Hearts, and the one on the right is Snuggle Up, and they're both just cuteness overload. So, so cute. I've already stamped them on the Spellbinders cardstock with black pigment ink, and on the back is the textured side. Um, usually watercolor paper has one side that's really textured and one side that's not. And I tend to color on the side that it is not. All right, so I have my setup here. I have my water media mat from Waffle Flower that I like to work on. It's silicone. And I'm going to pull out my Distress inks. And the thing I like about the watercolor media mat is you can see you can just press your inks right into these little wells. They're like the perfect little size. Now I'm not gonna go over every color I'm using. I, I'll list those colors in my blog um, and there'll be a link to my blog below. But I will tell you that for the mouse, um, and by the way, I'm starting with the medium brush. Um, and I have water off site. Now what I was saying before is I've learned with these water brush, these types of water brushes over the years, I don't put water in the well I'm sorry, I don't put water in the barrel of the brush when I'm painting an image. Uh, and that's because I've experienced drippage, you know, when I'm busy coloring an image and all of a sudden water, more water comes out than I wanted. So I am using this brush as just a regular paintbrush, the kind that you just dip in water when you need it. So you'll see me every once in a while, you know, take my brush off camera. That means I'm dipping it into the water. And uh, I think I already said, but for the most part, the mouse is frayed burlap. But again, I'll list all the colors on my blog. And you'll see what I'm doing is I'm just going around the perimeter of the mouse, like where he's sitting on the candy and the great thing about these stamps from House Mouse, Mouse House, whichever one, um, all the shadows are there. It, it's a really great uh, stamp for beginners because you really could just come in here and just paint your colors on and call it a day. But the other nice thing is if you're a beginner and you want to learn how to shadow or add shadows, 
these stamps show you where the shadows are. So you can just follow along and practice. And that's what I was doing here. I, I really intended this to be a very quick watercoloring session. Um, but I, you know, I just really needed this. It was a rough week. Um, I'm having issues with my blog host and I spent most of my week, uh, on my computer dealing with online support chats and, and all that. So I, I spent more time than I had intended, but I was having fun and practicing, you know, my watercoloring. So I'm not going to show you all of the watercoloring. I don't consider myself to be a colorist. Um, if you really want to see an expert watercolor artist, uh, I would recommend watching videos from Christina Werner. She is amazing. Uh, but you know, I'm more of the fake it till you make it type person. And that's fine. I look, I'm not dissing my, my watercolor art, but, uh, I find watercoloring to be a very forgiving medium because you can fake it till you make it. And you saw me come in there with a paper towel and that's because part of, to me, the forgiving nature of water. Oh, I'm going to stop and tell you what's going on. I, finally pulled out the picture I hadn't really been consulting the picture and I discovered that what I thought was his ear was part of the candy and what I thought was candy was part of his ear so here's the forgiving part you can come in with water and blot up color because it is watercolor it is distressing it's water reactive so if you ever want to kind of erase a mistake just come in with clean water and take your paper towel and blot it up and you can get most of the color up. So at that point, I was kind of trying to um, erase the paint that I had put on the candy, which was part of his ear, and, you know, move on. So now I'm just moving on to coloring the candies. And I'm going to go over each candy with a base color. Those are going to be my lightest colors. And... Um, again, I'm not going to show you all the watercoloring. I will show you some of the shadowing that I'm going to do. But again, right now I'm just putting in the base colors. And for the blue and green candies, the base colors look very similar. And that's where the shading came in handy when I came in with darker colors. So again, I, I think these stamp sets are great for beginners. Um, because, well, first of all, there's a picture that you can consult on the packaging like I did. Um, oh, all right. Here we are with the darker colors. Now, I have the fine brush. This is a very fine tip brush. And I can get in there into those letters. Um, so I'm coloring in all the letters with the fine brush. Because, you know, if you think about these little heart candies in real life, they those letters are indented into the candies. So... I thought they should be darker, and so that's how I did this. And the fine brush worked really well for getting into those very tiny areas. And here you see how I'm kind of following the contours of the candies with my fine brush to get those shadows. And again, those shadows are already there from the ink, from the actual stamp detail, but I'm just enhancing them with my paint colors. And I don't have to be an expert to know where the shadows would be because they're already there. And I'm just following along. And again, that's why I love these stamp sets. Well, and the fact that they're just so completely adorable. Now, I had intended when I was painting this image that the whole image was going to show. But you've already seen the card. I actually had to cover up a lot of these candies. Um, so if I had known that from the beginning, I may not have colored them all. And I, I'm kind of glad I colored them all. It just really gave me some practice time. And again, like I said, I, I really needed to sit down and create something this weekend. It was just much needed art therapy. And if you can't tell, I, I sound like I have a cold. I don't know what's going on. I 
yesterday I thought it was allergies. So um, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it stays with just allergies. Now I'm coloring, um, you know, I'm just coming in with all of my darker colors and just enhancing all of those shadows. Now, the other thing is I had come in with kind of a muddy pink for his feet and tail and even his face. And I'm going to come in um, at some point and just try to lighten those areas up. I'm not sure if I'm going to show that, but I, I came in with some sponge sugar and I think some kitsch flamingo for his little cheeks. Yeah, I may have cut out some of that part, but I tried to brighten up the pink of his, you know, feet and, and hands a little bit. And again, to lighten it up, I would just take water on his feet to mop up what I had already, or to kind of erase what I had already done. All right. So let's move on to the second image. I knew that this one I was going to have just the mouse peeking through the heart. So right now I am just kind of lining up the heart dye that I used um, so that I didn't, um, you know, spend time coloring part of this image that I wasn't going to end up showing. Um, and I apologize if you heard my dogs in the background. Uh, <laughs> they love barking out the patio door at anything pretty much. All right, I'm, I'm just going to show you a little bit of this mouse um, and how I did the shadowing on the on the leaf. For the most part, I just did a, an overall wash um, on both leaves. And I'm just going to come in and kind of, kind of follow the lines of the leaf with my darker colors. And I did use quite a blend of colors on this leaf. Uh, again, those will be on my blog. And I did add some shadows to their adorable little faces. And okay, I had left the stamps in my Misties. I have two Misties, a mini one. This is the mini one. And I knew that I wanted to restamp, which is why I left the stamps in. So you know, I made sure that my paper, I actually ran my paper through my die cutting machine to make sure I, it wasn't warped. And I'm going to show you a before and after. Um, the one on the left is actually before restamping. And you can see how it brings all that detail back. Now, you don't have to do this. I didn't have to. I don't know which one you would prefer. I think it's really cool to see all that detail come back. Uh, it's not like the ink fades when you watercolor. It's just some of the detail gets a little muddy, I would say. So here I am restamping that as well. And thankfully, uh, both restamps were successful. I didn't mess it up. All right, this is the new one two punch from Spellbinders. And it's kind of a corner rounder. And then it also has this end that puts notches in and that's handy for making envelopes. I really wanted to try to make an envelope for this video, but I just ran out of time. So um, I'm going to try that in a later time, but here's the corner part. There's the notch part and I'm going to make my, the cover panel, the top panel of my card um, rounded. And I love this. You don't have to have a special die uh, and it just puts perfect rounded edges on here. So I wanted to do this before painting and I'm going to paint this cover panel with my Zig Clean Color Water Brush Markers and these are watercolor markers. And now I'm pulling out my bold brush and I did put water in the well. I don't know if you can see that. Now to get the water out you just squeeze it kind of where you would naturally hold the brush anyway. And so I am just going to scribble my zig markers on this panel. This is, again is the Spellbinders watercolor cardstock. And I'm going to go from dark to light, kind of trying to make an ombre effect. Um, again, these colors will be listed in my blog. I haven't done this in a while. I used to love doing this. So um, 
I'm glad these watercolor brushes reminded me of this. So you just take a bunch of water and just, you know, blend the colors on. And those zig color brushes are great for this. So I'm just going to dry that panel. And you'll see that because these are water watercolor brushes, basically, they come right off of my silicone mat. Okay, so I did obviously cut a hole in that panel with the heart die and um, I popped it up on foam tape over this colored image just to give it a little bit of dimension. Now I have a card base and I didn't want to put this on um, you know a rectangular card base with those squared off edges so I'm going to put corners on these as well. Now this is not heavy cardstock this is my hammer mill I think um, so I don't know if it's 80, but I was able to get through both layers of that card base. So now I can just go ahead and glue that onto the panel. Now I just wanted to show you, you could take any size piece of paper to put on this panel. And that's the great thing about this little one, two punch. All right, here are my finished cards, and obviously I stamped sentiments. I think both sentiments came from that Candy Hearts set, and I stamped them on black cardstock. And this little one, it looks like I used a sentiment strip die, and I did. So I, I used this particular die, and I did partial die cutting just to make it a little smaller to fit my sentiment. And But it's not from a sentiment set. It's actually from this... Um, essential modern ovals set so this comes with tons of actually a lot of dies in this set but the smallest one is great for sentiments so I really wanted a rounded sentiment to kind of go along with all the rounded rounded parts of that um, card and I, I was saying that I heat embossed the sentiments on black cardstock I used an off-white embossing powder and I really love doing that when your background is off-white and not a crisp white. I think it makes a really big difference. Um, and obviously the I Love You sentiment, I used a little heart from that Essential Heart set, the same set that I used for both openings on these cards. And I think these are so sweet and adorable. And I think the more important part is that I had... A really great time making them it was just much needed crafty time um, so I hope you enjoyed this if you wanted to see more of my watercoloring let me know I you know again I didn't want to have a really long video with you just watching me watercolor but let me know maybe you're interested in seeing more of those Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye.